Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is software validation within the design process. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video you've seen, please go back and watch the introduction to the executive series. Finally, check out the video description below for links to any supporting information and a summary of the material that we will cover. In my executive series, we have a standard agenda, which consists of four items. You can see those items in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for the bonus three questions. Our requirement today, software validation, comes directly from 820.30G and ISO 1345 sections 4.1.6 and 7.3.7. .7. Software validation in five words. Validate medical devices containing software. We have to have a procedure that covers how we do design validation. And that procedure also has to include software that's in our medical device, or if our, soft, if our product itself is standalone software, that that software is validated. Software validation itself is a completely different animal than all other types of validation. There are lots of guidance documents out there that will help you determine the most appropriate method for validating your software. Just remember, if it has software, it has to be validated. So how do I know this is working? First, I have procedures in place for software validation. Second, I stay up to date on industry trends related to software validation. Cybersecurity, agile methodologies, there are many, many hot topics when software and it's always evolving and it's evolving very quickly. Third, the tools that I use when I'm developing my software, coders, compilers, testing, all of those tools they are also validated for their intended use. If my device communicates with other devices, I'm testing that communication during the validation. And finally, all defects found during the validation are documented, reviewed, risk determined, and they are addressed before my product launch. So how do I know this is not working? Well, first, important elements or important industry trends are overlooked. Defects found during your software validation are not addressed. And then finally, you have major safety and effectiveness issues that are identified after product launch that must be addressed through a hot patch or a fix or a recall of your product. Now for the three bonus questions. What procedure governs software validation? Second, what methodology do we use when we develop our software? Third, how do we manage defects that are found during the testing process? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.